In this video, we are going to look at the different equivalences when we combine different types of interest rate options or different types of swaptions. So when we long an interest rate call option and short an interest rate put option, and uh, of course, these options have the same underlying interest rate, they have the same time to expiry and the same exercise rate, which is the current forward rate agreement rate. So what would that combination be equivalent to? It will be easier to link it back to the put call parity relationship, where a long call and a long risk-free bond, which is the fiduciary call. So this would be equivalent to a long put and the long underlying. So this would be the protective put position. So now if you want a long call position, that means we need a long call and a short put. So I will rearrange the put call parity. So when you have C minus P, on the right hand side, we will have the underlying minus the risk free bond. So when you have a long interest rate call and a short interest rate put, that will be equivalent to receive floating. So for the underlying portion, that is a floating amount. And because it's plus, that's why we are saying we receive. And for the part where we minus, that is where you pay. You pay a fixed amount. Okay, The, the risk-free bond is a fixed amount. And there is only one settlement in this case. So this net amount would be equivalent to a forward. Okay, And specifically, this would be an interest rate forward. And another name for interest rate forward is a forward rate agreement or FRA. Right, so to recap, a long call and a short put option would be equivalent to a receive floating pay fix forward rate agreement. Now, what if you have a long interest rate put and a short interest rate call option? So that would be equivalent to a long put, short call. So a long put and a short call, that would be equivalent to the risk-free bond minus the underlying so in this case, this is a plus, so we receive fix. So minus means you pay floating. Okay, so a long interest rate put and a short interest rate call option is equivalent to a receive fix pay floating FRA. Next, what if we long an interest rate cap option and short an interest rate floor option? What would that be equivalent to? And here the exercise rate for the cap and flow would be set equals to the swap rate. So caps would be a portfolio of caplets. Okay, it's a portfolio of caplets, which are caplets are interest rate call options, and flow is a portfolio of flowlets. Okay, so each flowlet is an interest rate put option. So in the same way, when you long cap, so means you long cap and you short the interest rate floor, again, based on the put call parity, so that would be equivalent to the underlying minus the risk-free bond. But this time, don't forget caplets, caps is a portfolio of caplets. So you will have many caplets. Okay, there'll be multiple caplets that mature at different times. Okay, there's caplet one and caplet two. And then there's also flowlet 1 and flowlet 2 and so on and so forth. Okay, so that will continue. So for each long caplet and short flowlet, that would be equivalent to a receive floating, a receive floating and pay fix FRA. Okay, so that's, that's one of it. And then there'll be the second one and the third one and the fourth one. So each combination of a long caplet and a short flowlet would be equivalent to a receive floating pay fix forward rate agreement. And now that we have multiple or many forward rate agreements, that combination would be equivalent to a receive floating pay fix interest rate swap. Right, so keep in mind that a swap is a package of forwards. 
Now for a long interest rate floor and a short interest rate cap, we will write this. So this is a long floor, long floor and short cap. So for a long floor and a short cap, that would be equivalent to the risk-free bonds minus the underlying. So again, for the floor, there will be a portfolio of floorlets. Okay, and then there will for the cap, there is a portfolio of caplets. And that will be equivalent to a receive, fix, pay, floating, FRA. And for that series of floorlets and caplets, there will be a series of receive fix and pay floating forward rate agreements. And that whole package of forwards will be equivalent to a receive fix, pay floating, interest rate, swap. Let's move on to swaptions. So swaptions are options that allow the buyer of the option to enter into a swap to either pay fix or receive fix. Now in the case where you have long a payer swaption and short a receiver swaption, okay, so what would that be equivalent to? So for a payer swaption, the payoff is similar to what we see in a call option because uh, we will exercise the payer swaption if the swap rate at expiration is greater than the swaption rate. So in this case, you can say that for a long payer swaption, it is plus C, okay, like plus long a call. And for the short receiver, for receiver swaption, if you buy the receiver swaption, it gives you the right to enter into a swap to receive fix, okay? And we will, the receiver swaption will be exercised if the swap rate at expiration is below the swaption rate. So it's like a put option. So now we are going to short the receiver swaption. So a long payer swaption and a short receiver swaption would be equivalent to the underlying minus the risk-free bond. So in this case, a long payer swaption and a short receiver swaption is equivalent to a receive floating. And then we pay, pay, fix, forward, swap. Right, so now it's a forward swap. Why is it a forward swap? Because the swaption will expire at a future date, at which point, if the swaption is exercised, then the buyer of the option will enter into a swap. Okay, so the swap is entered in at a forward period. Not today, but at a later date. For a long receiver swaption and a short payer swaption, that would be equivalent to, and based on the put call parity, a long put and a short uh, call, the put res uh, resembling the receiver and the call will re uh, resemble the payer swaption. So that will be equals to the risk-free bond minus the underlying. Okay, so in this case, this would be a receive, fix, pay, floating, forward, swap. We can also say that when you long a callable fixed rate bond, it is equivalent to long a straight fixed rate bond and short a receiver swaption. So when we say long the callable bond, we are looking at it from the investor's perspective. So when the investor buys a callable bond, there is always a risk that the issuer will call the bond back and then reissue it at a lower rate, which then means that this is a risk to the bond investors because there is a risk that they will receive the bond uh, at a lower rate or they will get the bond purchase repurchased back by the issuer at a price lower than the market price. Now, in this case, how does the short receiver swaption work? How does it mimic the call feature in the callable bond? So for this long straight fixed rate bond, let's say that the investor, in if they buy a straight fixed rate bond, they will just receive a fixed rate. Okay, so I'll just write that using the exercise rate of the swaption, just to illustrate that it's a fixed amount. And short, uh, short a receiver swaptions, I'll just write minus 
the payoff that mimics the put option. So that's maximum of zero. And then the swaption rate minus the swap rate at expiration. Now, in this case, we'll assume two scenarios, one where the swap rate uh, is below the swaption rate. Okay, the swap rate is below the swaption rate. In this case, the receiver swaption is in the money. It will be exercised. So in this case, the payoff will be negative. Okay, uh, then that's the swaption rate minus the swap rate. So the, the short position will have to compensate the long position. Okay, so that will be equals to, if you cancel off, that will be equals to the swap rate. So what this is telling us is that if the swaption rate is lower, that if the swap rate, what this is telling us is if the swap rate is below the swaption rate, then the investor will actually receive a lower return, a lower rate than the swaption rate the X or the fixed rate here. So that's the risk to the investor. Okay, where but of course it's an advantage to the issuer. And of course, if the swap rate is greater than the swaption rate, then the option, the swaption will be out of the money. So the investor will receive the higher rate, which is the swaption rate. So in this case, the investor will either receive the swaption rate or the lower swap rate. Okay, where the lower swap rate mimics the the circumstances where the issuer will call back the bond and then they will refinance it with a lower rate. Now, of course, here we are looking at things from the investor's perspective. If you want to look at it from the issuer's perspective, so when we switch it around, long becomes a long to an investor is a short from the issuer's perspective. So if I were to rewrite this equation, so for, from the issuer's perspective, they will short the callable fixed rate bond. Okay, so I'll just write minus for short. So short the callable fixed rate bond is equivalent to short the straight bond. And of course, for short, if you turn it around, that will be long, long the receiver swaption. So in fact, what he's saying here is that from the issuer's perspective, they are actually having a, they have a long receiver swaption, okay, which in a way they purchase from the investors of the bond. So when you see a short here, it means that the investor is selling a receiver swaption to the issuer. Now, a question may be asked, what if, okay, what if the issuer wants to remove the callable feature from the bond? What do they do using, let's say, a swaption? So currently they have a long receiver swaption position here. Okay, there's a synthetic position there that mimics the call feature. So if the issuer wants to remove the call feature, all they need to do is sell a similar feature receiver swaption. Okay, so once they sell it, it will offset the long receiver swaption that they have. 